Yes, hello everyone. Uh, it's 11 a.m. Uh, Central European time. Uh, so 11 a.m. here in Learn, and welcome today to this uh, Applicant Week webinar where we are focusing on programs in uh, business economics and management. Very warmly welcome all of you. Uh, today, uh, I am joined by several representatives from our programs. I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves in, in a minute. Uh, but before I do that, I would like to encourage all uh, participants who have questions for our program uh, to use the Zoom Q&A function to post your questions. And hopefully these questions will be relevant for the program representatives that are here and we'll discuss them together with them. And hopefully you'll be able to get some um, valid information about our programs, the content and how to make a successful application uh, to a program at Lund University. Uh, we have just one hour uh, ahead of us, uh, 11 till 12. So I'm not going to waste too much time just speaking about what's going to happen today. Uh, we've all used Zoom before, so I think you're used to it by now. So I'm actually going to ask our program representatives to introduce themselves and the programs that they are uh, representing as well. And we, we're going to start with Jan in my top left corner. Please introduce yourself, Jan. Well, thank you very much and welcome, everyone. So my name is Jan Bietenbeck. I'm an associate professor at the Department of Economics and I'm the program director for the Masters of Science program in economics. Uh, this is a two-year program and my responsibility in the program is mostly sort of the coordination of the teaching and all other academic activities. I also teach in the program myself in the areas of health and labor economics, uh, which are also my areas of research. Thank you, Jan. Uh, next up, we have Joachim from Data Analytics and Business Economics. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Joachim Westerlund, and I'm professor at the Department of Economics. Uh, my research is in econometrics, <clears throat> and I'm director, as, as Johan said, of uh, our master program, Data Analytics and Business Economics. Excellent. Thank you. Hossein, you're up next. You're muted, Hossein. Please unmute yourself. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am uh, Hossein Askarian, professor at the Department of Economics, uh, Lund University. And uh, I have been responsible for the master program in finance from 2007 when it started to 2020. Uh, the current director is uh, Dr. Jens Forsbeck, but uh, he was uh, he's, uh, teaching, so he couldn't participate in this meeting i am doing his job here and happy to answer your questions thank you hossein uh, i just want to remind uh, all visitors that please use the q a to ask your questions don't wait don't delay uh, if you have a question please post it as soon as possible so that we have time to go through them all later on now i would like to welcome uh, jorgen from european and international trade and tax law to introduce himself Yes, hello everyone. I'm Jorgen Hetne and I'm a professor of business law uh, and I'm then director of this program of, of European International Trade and Tax Law. So we add these kind of legal aspects to, to different kind of backgrounds that you have, like economics and political science and other things. But that is enough for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jorgen. Next up, we have Tobias from Economic History. Hello everybody, I'm Tobias Axelsson from Economic History, where I'm a senior lecturer and uh, I'm also the Director of Studies and I'm stepping in for Martin uh, Anderson, one of the program directors uh, from our department. Um, apart from doing all this admin stuff, I um, do of course research, but I also teach in uh, the program. Okay, thank you Tobias. And lastly, uh, but not least, we have Christina Keller from Information Systems. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. My name is Kristina Keller. I'm a professor in information systems uh, at the Department of Informatics, and I'm the program director of the one year uh, master program in information systems. Right. Thank you, Kristina. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. And we can touch upon that before we started the session there at the Faculty of Economics and Management. We offer both one year and two year programs. Um, would anyone like to just briefly try to explain what the, what's the difference? Is the one-year master a real full master, or do you, 
how does it work? Christina, uh, you have a one year program. Can you tell us a bit about the philosophy behind that and why it's not a two year program? Yeah, it was decided to be a one year program before I came to the department, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, but what I can see is that uh, even though it's um, only a one year program, it gives a breadth of knowledge. Uh, our teachers are also researchers in the courses that they, they teach. So um, I think it is a good way of having a, a nice professional role in cons uh, IT consultancy as a project manager uh, to work in, in the information systems industry and work with companies that right now digitalize, which is many different kind of organizations, for instance, healthcare, banking, you name it. Uh, the only issue I can see with one year program is that if you want to go further with research, if you want to be a PhD student, uh, then perhaps that program is a bit short. If you have a two year program, you can, for instance, have a thesis uh, a master thesis of 30 credits, which is a much more profound and long uh, preparation for going in, into, into science or research. So what you're saying perhaps is that the one-year programs are, maybe they are designed this way to prepare students to join uh, the labor market uh, more quickly. Uh, yes. Yeah. Is that correct? Hossein, no, at least uh, in our case. Yes. Okay. Hossein, mm -hmm. the finance program is also one year. Do you know if employ future employers, do they think, oh, it's a one-year program or a two-year program? Does it matter to them? Uh, actually, we designed this one to be oriented toward the job market. And according to, you know, that uh, our finance program is ranked among the top 50 in the world. Uh, according to Financial Times ranking, and according to their statistic or survey to the students, the 86% of our students get job within three months. Uh, but of course, we have a high quality courses that prepare also students to apply for the PhD program, but of course not after the first year, or not within the first year because they haven't written their essay yet, but after the first year, and many of our, not many of us now, but many of PhD students uh, in finance are from the past students in our finance program. So it doesn't close the uh, path to a PhD, but uh, prepare more effective, uh, efficiently students for the job market. Okay, thank you. Tobias, you raised your hand. Yeah, just to say in, uh, in our program, the economic growth uh, population development, it's a two year program, but you can actually leave it after the first year if you like. Um, so it's sort of a, du a double <laughs> solution there that you can leave with a master's degree after one year and then you're focused on some core courses. But if you want to go deeper into uh, the subject matter, then you can continue to the second year. Um, and of course, the second year is then also more specialized and doesn't hurt if you want to pursue a research career. Uh, you can, of course, find jobs uh, as well, but it's sort of a double, uh, a double type of, uh, of program. Mm. Thank you. It's Christina, you raised your hand. before. Yes, we I, I just wanted to clarify, of course, you can uh, apply for a PhD and get the PhD position after a one year master. That's no problem. Mm. But the two year master gives you a longer and deeper preparation. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. So we have a couple of questions now in the Q&A. Uh, there's one question from Leona. The first question, I think, uh, Jan, is for you. What makes the Master of Science in Economics program in Lund stand out in comparison to other economics programs in Europe? Uh, that's a great, great question. Yeah. Um, thanks, Leona. Uh, I think like what really makes us unique is this combination of we have like really world class researchers who teach in the master's program, like internationally recognized scholars who publish in the very top journals and, uh, you know, who are uh, visiting the top departments uh, in other universities in the United States uh, and, and Europe regularly. And then we have like a really big breadth of courses. So we have a first semester where you take some core courses that are mandatory. And after that, it's essentially up to you to design your own program. We have like a very large amount of courses. You can take courses in economics, but we even allow for courses from other departments and fields to some extent. 
and uh, it really gives you a lot of flexibility to design your own program your own own curriculum mm. thank you very much is this also some of the other programs that are represented here today do you also have the opportunity to to tailor your program to the needs or interest of the student or is it more like th these are the courses we have in the program so all students have to take these courses maybe there's a difference between one and two year programs here a little bit, I suppose. You are Kim, what do you say? Data analytics and business economics. Do you have one set of courses that all students have to take and that's it? Um, more or less, yes. And it's the same with the finance program that Hussein represents that. So we have one elective course, but the rest of the courses, they are they are mandatory. So, so there is, um, you uh, you don't have uh, all that much to, to, to choose from, but um, the, there is a reason for that too. Um, so it's, um, um, yeah, um, pure matter of taste. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Jorgen, you raised your hand. Yeah, it was to, to say something about these possibilities to have a choice between different courses. And I, I mean, in the program I'm talking about, which is the, I mean, the legal program, uh, there, there is a choice between tax law and trade law uh, for the beginning, and there you have to make a choice. So you can be a tax specialist after or a trade law specialist. Uh, but also within trade, we have a lot of opportunities to, to design your own um, master degree with different courses. So one track within that trade track is uh, about intellectual property law, and then we have also competition aspects and contract law, etc. But you can design it a little bit as we want, actually. Mm -hmm. so I think to mention that. Hossein was next to raise his hand. Uh, yes, uh, about these uh, compulsory or elective courses, we don't have any elective courses in our one year program. So we have six uh, courses and class SA. But the students have um, can uh, apply for a double degree. We have two double degrees. Uh, a program with one with EM Lyon and the other one is uh, Groningen. So for Groningen, for example, you can study uh, one semester and get two masters, one or master, and then you complete the master from Groningen. And also we have the possibility of the, I think that the, all the courses at the school have all the programs, for the master, international master class. So after completion of the program, then you can study one semester as exchange students in very good universities like Bocconi, uh, uh, so for example, at HEC. Uh, we had previously, or in previous years, all the students went to these universities. And then you don't get uh, another degree for that one, but you get uh, those courses in your transcripts. And those are elective. So you have a possibility to add elective courses if you want one additional semester in this way. Yes, uh, that's good that you mentioned that. Thank you, because this is a kind of a unique uh, thing that uh, the School of Economics and Management has introduced international master's class. Uh, I believe there are more than uh, your program, uh, Hossein, right? It's more uh, the opportunity exists for yeah, yeah, several for, programs. Yeah. yeah, for several programs. Thank you. Christina, you raised your hand. We we have a we have a limited, but uh, any any way, a little bit of a uh, possibilities of electing courses. In um, the first semester, you can choose between taking courses in business intelligence or human computer interaction design. And in the spring, you can choose between business processes and uh, artificial intelligence, business decision management, and designing digitalization. So there is, there is a certain possibility to elect courses at least. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tobias. Um, yes, uh, I was just going to say that we have very much a smorgasbord of, uh, of courses where it's very much based on that there are some core courses depending on what track you choose uh, if you want to do economic growth, population or development. But apart from that, you get to choose from each other's courses within the different tracks. So there's a, um, a lot of different courses to choose from and you can sort of tailor your uh, to your own needs and that's of course also reflected in when you write your thesis because then if you've chosen to go down one uh, road then you can sort of focus your thesis uh, on on that particular uh, topic i should also say that i mean we are um, i guess our department is very closely connected to a lot of the other social sciences uh, and of course economics but that means that uh, we have, we're quite liberal in also allowing students to take courses that are not offered by us. So they can take courses in economics, 
uh, business, they can take courses in so sociology or gender studies, things that sort of fit into uh, uh, to the program plan. Uh, but as I said, we're very liberal also in what they can, uh, uh, can then focus on there. So I think what we can conclude here from the programs represented is that there's a huge difference between different programs with regard to this. Some are more fixed and some are quite open. Uh, and depending on the program that students are applying to, they need to find out maybe before they make their applications. So this is what it's going to look like in uh, when I'm in the program. Um, so we have uh, from Randy a question to Joachim, I believe. Uh, I got the information from the official page that the master's program in data analytics and business economics is only one year in length. So I'm a bit worried about my employment after graduation. Did most alumni get jobs before they graduated? What kind of companies do they work in? Thank you. Well, yeah, yep, what right. can you say about that, Joachim? <laughs> uh, good question. Um, that is not, um, I, I guess, the, the length of the program. Um, um, one aspect of that is, is how lucrative the, the labor market is. And um, <clears throat> uh, again, as with finance uh, here in, in, in the data analytics uh, industry, um, uh, graduates are highly sought after. So uh, last year, um, students had no uh, difficulties finding jobs. So, so many of them uh, had already secured a job midway through the program. So already after six months, um, they ha had secured a job. Uh, they followed through and then they, they enrolled in, in employment. Um, so so, so this, is, um, this is not a disadvantage at all. I would say uh, quite on the contrary that, that uh, uh, most uh, companies that the, that the students go to, they have um, on um, uh, on site um, uh, continues the education. So, so uh, when when you're finished from uni, that is just um, uh, university studies can also only get you that far. And then um, different companies work in different ways, and so they want to put their uh, hand on on you as as a graduate. So uh, so the one year uh, length uh, of a program is uh, at least in this industry is, is not a, a, a disadvantage, but quite on the contrary. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the students where they go to, so they go to um, yeah, um, basically um, all companies that have some kind of. Um, um, data analysis involved uh, are potential um, uh, potential employers, and, and that means basically <laughs> all companies. <laughs> uh, it could be in manufacturing, it could be in finance, it could be in economics. Um, the the range is is very very broad. Um, so 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 there is um, there is a big market for for um, graduates with a, with a uh, data analytics background. Mm. And I also want to just quickly throw in a question here because I when you examine the entry requirements to your program, it, I find it's not exactly necessary for students to have studied economics before, as long as they have studied, for example, statistics uh, and mathematics. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So we we do not have any. Any entry requirements um, uh, of a, a degree in, in a certain uh, field, uh, such as economics or statistics or whatever it might be, uh, the, the only requirement is that you have um, a good technical background. So, so there are some uh, minimum requirements on, on um, statistics, mathematics, and, and econometrics. Um, and, and that's basically it. So you can have any background. All right, thank you. Now we have a question for Hossein. Uh, Ferry is asking for the Master of Science in Finance. Um, the selection criteria is based on academic merits from previous university studies. Does that mean that someone with a bachelor's degree other than finance, for example, accounting, have a smaller chance to be uh, admitted than people with a major in finance? How about the appraisal of the current professional work? For example, if they have work experience, does that matter, Hossein? 
Uh, no, it is not limited to the finance or we don't prioritize, for example, one kind of topic to other. We have students from both business and econ and finance backgrounds. So that actually we are looking for having that kind of mixture because we are preparing the students for both job as, for example, uh, analytics in the for financial market issues and also for corporate finance. So or students get job in banks and also in corporates in their, for example, auditing or other kind of things. So we don't have that kind of preferences at all. The grades are important and also the course background as we have these prerequisites should be fulfilled. So we uh, demand 90 ECTS in uh, uh, economic or business. And then we demand a course in micro, a course in statistics, and also a course in finance. So this should be, and then the grades are important for getting. Now we don't uh, consider that much work experience, but maybe in some specific cases, we have two students with uh, also almost the same quality, then we also look at their, uh, yeah, uh, how proper are their other kind of backgrounds. So work experience can be one of the factors, but can be other aspects too. There can matter, but mostly we look at the academic merits. Mm, thank you, Jose. That's interesting. I, I think I should point out that all programs have their uh, own selection criteria, and it, uh, often it's based, you know, the academic performance and grades on previous courses, but occasionally it can be other things as well. Mm. Um, Tobias, speaking of that, what makes an uh, application stand out for, for your program, if it's not just uh, academic merits. Uh, can you yeah. tell us a bit about that? I mean, it's been touched upon quite a bit here. I mean, of course, uh, so the way that our program is built as well is that it depends a little bit on what track you're on. Uh, as I said before, we have the economic growth, uh, population and development. And so um, then uh, it, the, the, cho the chosen track will in a sense uh, also be looking a little bit for what uh, makes you stick out from that uh, point of view. Uh, but I would say that um, one thing that I've noticed over the years um, is that it's been getting better, but often the, the, um, the letters of intent or those kind of things are, um, um, people fill them in very uh, quickly, or uh, they use the same one for every program. I mean, we spot that quite quickly when we assess that uh, they've only changed the name uh, in, uh, in the header and that's it. So I think put a little bit of effort into that uh, is something that uh, I uh, think is important for, uh, uh, for our uh, program. Um, and also, um, sort of, um, I think that uh, we're not looking you know, after pure economists or uh, pure uh, political scientists. We're looking for a slightly broader uh, uh, background uh, as well, uh, given the, uh, the what our uh, discipline spans uh, over. But as I said, we have three different tracks. So if you're very interested in development, it doesn't hurt you to have done a lot of development issues, and maybe you've been uh, doing uh, internships, etc. Before that, obviously makes you um, stick out in that uh, context. Um, and then, as uh, was said here before, of course, we have our general criteria that uh, fits for all the. And the three tracks. Right. Uh, Jorgen, can we hear from, uh, what about European and international trade and tax law? How, how are students selected and how do they, you know, how, how can a student stand out? Is there anything other than just pure academic merits that you look at? Yeah, of course, uh, for students, grades are also important, but we are, also have grades from all over the, the world, so we have to compare quite different uh, applications. So I think for us, the, the, this letter of intent or statement of purpose, as we call it, is actually very important. We think that a serious student who really wants to, to, to study in Lund should also explain why this is important for the future and why the students have chosen the program. So we, we put a uh, lot of effort to, to read that. That is our direct communication with a future student and the only personal letter we have. So I would also I'll confirm what Tobias said, that, that it's important to, to take that seriously, mm. the statement of purpose. OK, thank you. Uh, shall we move on with the question from uh, one of the visitors here? Petra is asking uh, to Jan. Um, master in economics, should students write two master thesis in two different topics, or is it also possible to continue the topic of the first, first thesis within the second thesis? Do you have two 
two opportunities to write a thesis in in the master's program Jan. that's right uh, so petra is well informed already so we have a two-year master's program and what's kind of special is that we have a first master's thesis at the end of the first year and then a second master's thesis at the end of the second year and uh, in both theses you're completely free to choose your topic within the realm of economics so you can either choose very different topics or you can build up on your first thesis in the second thesis and uh, you know extend it and um, use maybe new data new methods new theories and insights there so both both are possible okay thank you um we have a question here uh, to you or Kim first I think uh, there, there's also a question for strategic management but they are not represented in this session so we have them uh, later at 2 p.m but the one-year master in business analytics have a thesis do you have a thesis you are Kim uh, at the end of your program um the the there is a project it says uh, or the question is that you have a project 15 credits at the end is that the thesis uh, this yep. person is aiming for a PhD, sorry, <laughs> this person is aiming for a PhD position in the future, but his his or her previous degree did not contain a thesis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, exactly as you you said, Johan, uh, so at the end of the program, there is um, <clears throat> a 15 credit uh, thesis that you write. So, um, uh, last, last year was the first uh, time we, we um, the first cohort, so we launched the program last year. Um, and uh, th then roughly half of the students wrote uh, a thesis using public data and the other half uh, wrote it together with, with, with a company um, that provided a thesis case. Um, and, and so yes, so, so there is uh, like with the other programs, there there is a thesis component uh, in the in the end. I, I think that the heading um, is called degree project or something like this in in, in the curriculum, but, but that is in fact a thesis. Right. Yeah. Good. Thanks for clarifying that. We have a question for uh, Hossein here. Um, the application to the Master of Science in Finance, do you give uh, any merit to applicants who have obtained a local country professional license, for example, CPA? I don't know what a CPA is, but maybe you do, Hossein, you're in the industry. Yeah. So, the uh, yeah, we do. So, of course, we look first to these uh, academic merits and their uh, other, uh, for example, if they fulfill prerequisites, that's important thing, and then their grades. And uh, if they have a bachelor essay, for example, we look at those kinds of things. And then we also look at the other factors, as I said, maybe their background, they're having CPA or other kind of professional certification. And also, uh, yeah, this uh, kind of, if they have, for example, uh, from some countries can be helpful if you want to show your, uh, for example, analytical ability or quantitative ability, show some GRE results, for example, a GMAT result is not compulsory, but can be helpful for selection of good students. So those uh, things we are also consider as some kind of academic merit in general. So their level of knowledge in the field and mm. abilities so we look at all these factors yeah yeah that's good thank you for pointing that out Hussein. the the gre or gmat test results are not mandatory as a mandatory part of the application but if if a student or an applicant has indeed taken one of those tests and obtained a, gotten a good result they're more than welcome to submit those so we can they are very that. helpful for our decision yeah thank you very much so Victoria uh, has a kind of a general question, but I mean, many of our programs in Learned, you have to make a selection. Uh, out, out of all the applicants, there are many who fulfill the entry requirements and uh, who are competing for a limited number of seats on the program. Uh, so this person uh, is worried. <laughs> Maybe there are 1,000 applicants to program, but just 50 seats. Is it really hard to get a seat in the program uh, or if, is it enough to just make a good application? You have a good background, you come from a good university, and you make an application. How how competitive is it really to get a get a position or program? Uh, Christina, what do you say for information systems? Do you have to make a selection or uh, every year? And is it difficult to make a selection? We have we have to make a selection every year, and it's based on academic grades. I would say. 
uh, not we don't consider what university you come from uh, but we have to like compare the grades from different universe universities throughout the world we have uh, in my program we have the highest share of uh, international students so it is the grades and it's also i would say the letter of intent uh, we would like it to be very real uh, concrete um, sometimes you can see letters of intent that seem to cover every kind of program that uh, we suspect has been copied and that students have sent the same letter of intent to many different programs and many different universities and that make us think that uh, this application is not so serious so that will just bring it down a bit but it is great and uh, I think that those people who have applied for the program in, as the first selection, I would say that 70% of them probably gets in. Okay. Uh, but there are other programs in, in uh, Lund School of Economics and Management that has a very uh, a higher uh, number of applications and a lower number of places. We have 50 places. Okay, you have 50 places. I think I would like to ask you, Joachim, because your your program data analytics is new-ish. It's not brand new, of course. You've been running it for a, a few years, but it's still kind of new. Uh, but you have uh, quickly become one of our most sought-after programs. So you, how do you, how can you make a selection if you have 1,500 applicants to 40 seats or 50? I don't know how many seats you have in your program. Is it difficult? <laughs> Um, yes, yes, it is uh, difficult. So, so um, <clears throat> um, yeah. So, so this year um, we ended up at um, at place five. Um, so the fifth most sought after uh, program. Uh, all categories master programs in Sweden. So about nine hundred of those programs, I think. Uh, so we and we have and I think that the finance program is is just slightly slightly below us on on uh, uh, place seven or something like this. Um, so here, um, so so we do get between yeah twelve hundred to to fifteen hundred applications. So obviously th th there has to be uh, a selection, and this is. Um, this is something that we're fine tuning at, at the moment. Uh, so, so this uh, this aligning the students on entry with uh, the level of the courses is is something that that requires some fine tuning. So, so so this is something that we that we notice when we had the first cohort. Um, so, so now we have changed that a little bit. Um, but so we noticed because our program so, so there is a wide array of, of, of uh, programs in the data analytics um, area and, and ours is, is uh, pretty technical and so this is something we noticed from from the first cohort that that uh, we wanted students to, to to know a bit more and so then we have reweighted uh, let's say um, a little bit how how we how we sort the students on on entry, uh, but but it is again um, as I mentioned before, uh, technical background is is important. Mm -hmm. Jan, uh, can I ask you um, what about economics? Uh, what what do you look at when you admit students because they all have a bachelor's degree with a major perhaps in economics. So, so how do you select? Is it important that you a, come from a good university or are the grades more important than the, the, the home university status or is it a mix? So I think, uh, first of all, I want to say I, I like this general question we, that we got from uh, the potential applicant here. I think that this is a sign of our quality, right? That we have so many applicants for our programs. Um, uh, Joachim just said like 1500 applicants or so, uh, also for finance and we have like maybe eight or 900 applicants and usually our starting code is maybe like 70 people, right? So these numbers uh, are like a sign of our quality, but it shouldn't discourage you from applying, okay? So I, I really want to emphasize this. Uh, it's it's just a, uh, it shows that it's a great opportunity to come into our, to Lund and study in our programs. So in economics specifically, we don't 
actually require an undergraduate degree in economics, but we need you to have like 60 credits in core economics courses, econometrics or quantitative methods, statistics, and then uh, microeconomics. Um, what we look at is sort of the course content. So if you have more than 60 credits, that's certainly an advantage. And then of course, we look at the grades in these economics related courses. Uh, and this is uh, the most important criterion for us. It's not so much about the exact university you come from, but about which courses you have taken, are they closely related to economics and did you get good grades in there? Mm, thank you. Uh, Jose. I also can say that the finance program uh, is among the, yeah, one of the most uh, popular program. Uh, we usually have more than 1,000. Of course, I have not been uh, as a responsible for the program two, three years, but uh, usually we have more than thousands. But we have several persons sitting and looking uh, not only on the grades, these are great courses, the mix of courses, because we need uh, both business, economic, and a statistic background from the students. We look a little bit in all these aspects, and then we filter stepwise them, and the university is important too, which place they get their degree from. So we look at all these factors and then make uh, several steps uh, filtering until we sort out this one. But if you have a good grade, good combination of courses, fulfill the requirements, and uh, are from good universities, no need to worry for to apply. Right. If you if you have a good background, you have a you have a chance. I mean, that's what yeah, you're yeah, yeah, is. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want I have a new question. I just want to throw out there because uh, how we know we are proud to be one of the more international universities in in Europe. Uh, I think according to Times Higher Education, they named us the 49th most international uh, international university in the world. Uh, so this is something we're very proud of. And I know that in your classes, there are a great mix of people coming from basically all continents in the world. Uh, Jorgen, is that the case for, for your program as well? Is there a mix? Are we have Europeans, Africans, uh, people from the Americas, Asia, etc. Uh, and how important is this for the program? Yeah, I think very much so. That, that's why we, we are focusing on, on European law, because we are, I must say, we are more experts in, in the European law, but we, we're talking about trade law in general, and that is global. Uh, so we have from all continents, usually, and I, I would say that more than two thirds of the students are usually uh, foreign students, not Swedish students. So it's very international. It's very important for, I, I would say, our department. I mean, this is something we really focus on, and it's interesting to have this kind of mixture of students. It's also very good, very good for the discussions in the student groups and the group works, et cetera, that we, we have this mixture. So we are proud of that, to have an international uh, mixture. Thank you. To be us. I was just <clears throat> going to uh, say the same thing. We have uh, well over two thirds of the students are uh, in, uh, international students um, and uh, from all uh, all continents. Although of course Europe is the is overrepresented uh, in uh, for, I guess obvious reasons. Um, I should also say that we have a um, a second master's program, uh, a joint uh, degree with Groningen um, um, and um, uh, and Madrid. Uh, and we don't do the application or uh, admissions for those, uh, but it means that we get somewhere around 30 students coming in, um, international students coming in from that program every year as well, and they feed into all our courses. So they also contribute to the courses themselves being very international. Um, so, so I think uh, it's a very international uh, department as well. Thank you. Christina, I think you told us that you had the largest share of international students among the programs at the School of Economics and Management, or did I misunderstand you? Uh, no, you didn't. It's uh, about 80% each year that are international students. And uh, information systems is also a very, very international uh, discipline. It's sometimes even hard to uh, fully uh, teach it in Swedish because some of the terms and concepts are only in English anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a, a high share than 80% 80, 80 or more international students in the master program. And one of the benefits of this is something that we can see in the program ev evaluations that 
the students also learn to uh, work with people from other cultures, other countries, with other understandings of information systems and organizations. So that is like an additional uh, learning experience you get from being very international. Mm. Yes, thank you very much for weighing in. So we have a question here. It might be difficult to answer, uh, but there, there is a person who is wondering about economics. If I study a bachelor's and master's degree in economics in Sweden, do I have a guarantee of employment in the financial sector? <laughs> it's kind of guarantee is a is a dangerous word to use, I guess. But Jan, what do you say? What, if you have a master's degree in economics from from Lund, for instance, what type of uh, opportunities exist um, after uh, you graduate? I mean, it's certainly true that many of our graduates go on to work in the finance industry. So big banks, you know, are the traditional employers, uh, even like central banks, uh, but of course, guarantee is a word I'm not going to use here. Mm. Uh, it depends on your profile. As I said before, within our master's program, you can choose your courses pretty freely if you take a lot of finance courses, which certainly makes it more attractive to these financial sector employees. And then if you get good grades in those courses, even more attractive. And then I would say if, if you're aiming for such a job, your chances are very, very good. Um, but it, it depends, again, on your course choices, on your grade. Yeah, thank you. And I want to, because we do often get questions from people who, who want to stay in Sweden and they want to work here. Um, and that's only natural, I suppose. But at the same time, I usually tell people, I mean, you can't just look at Sweden. You have an international degree, right? You can go to Germany, you can go to France, you can go to the UK, you can go to Singapore. You, they don't have to limit their kind of job search to Sweden. Or uh, am I wrong? Uh, what, what do you guys think about how should uh, students think about their future careers in maybe private sector employment? Uh, is a degree from Lund University School of Economics and Management valid all over the world, as it were? Uh, Hossein. Uh, yes, in our case, uh, it is, as I, because uh, I co we collect always uh, ourselves, the group, the finance group collects information or the responsible for the program where the future. Uh, or, or the students or alumni have uh, got job and also they need to fulfill the to write a survey answer to financial times so we have a good check of their career after uh, then they finish at all and i can say that maybe 20 percent of our students get job in london 15 20 percent get job in luxembourg zurich in big finance, big uh, big companies in financial sectors, and uh, some students go back to their own country. But we have many students staying in, also uh, being, uh, yeah, uh, staying in Sweden, in Stockholm, especially Copenhagen. Uh, I can say this worldwide somehow, but most in the European, I can say Zurich, Luxembourg, London, and Germany. Many students work in Germany, different places in Germany, in financial sector. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because the program is known based on this ranking, then it's easier also to for other countries or for in the for companies outside Sweden to judge the quality of the program and their degree. Right. So, I mean, if you're listed in final Financial Times, it, yeah, it, 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 can, it can open doors for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Excellent. Uh, Joachim, what do you say? Should if, when when uh, graduates are looking for work, should they limit their search to Sweden, or is it is the world so connected these days that you can, with an international degree, you can work more or less in any country? Uh, you can work. Uh, I just want to say, so obviously you can work in any country. Um, but uh, so this was my expectation. So so a little bit like uh, Christina. Uh, so we have about 80 percent are, are non-Swedes in our program. And uh, my expectation uh, going in to, to, um, to the first cohort was that most of most of the students they they would move back or move elsewhere and 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 take take jobs elsewhere but but what we discovered is that many actually want to stay in sweden um for for, for many reasons it could be this uh, work life balance is is much is uh, much uh, better here and so on uh, and so uh, a big majority of students actually stayed so even students that were 
yeah, um, from Asia, from the US, uh, so on, they prefer to stay rather than to move uh, home or to move elsewhere to 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 to, um, to find a job. So, so, so that was a bit uh, that was surprising to me. Uh, but in hindsight, uh, it was um, um, yeah, um, not all that strange. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jürgen. Uh, Jürgen. Yeah, it's similar. I think our most program is design, so it can be that kind of degree can be used all over the world, and I think that it works very good with foreign students actually uh, using it when they go back to their home countries. Um, when it comes to law, uh, if it's about applying the law, it's important to understand also that uh, it's difficult to, for instance, in Sweden, only apply international law in English. So there is also the domestic legal system. So it's quite can be difficult to have that kind of positions. But if you more look at Europe in general, and of course some positions in Sweden as well, we have Brussels uh, with the EU law uh, and other international organizations like United Nations and OECD, etc. There it works. So it's designed to as good as possible, make it possible. Yeah, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Jürgen. Uh, Christina. Um, the, the trade that we work with information systems, it is international, so you, that uh, degree you get can be used in any country where there are digitalization going on in organizations. What might stop you in some countries, and sometimes in Sweden, is that in the actual work in a company, sometimes Swedish proficiency is required still, that in the larger companies, in IT consultancy, like in Saab, big banks, uh, big large companies, you can uh, muddle through in English, like, and uh, so then that doesn't stop you. But sometimes the language matters when it comes to smaller companies or municipalities. Right. Yeah, I think that's a valid point, but I would also usually recommend that if a student or a graduate has an idea to stay in Sweden a long time, it makes sense to learn Swedish, wouldn't it? Uh, if you're staying for just one year, okay, you don't need to learn Swedish, but if you're going to stay for 10 or 20 years, you probably should uh, learn Swedish at some point anyway. So, uh, But Jan, what do you say for economics? Uh, what How, how is uh, how are graduates uh, doing in uh, when they're looking for work? I think anywhere. they're doing great. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, and uh, like the initial question, like, uh, should you limit yourself to Sweden? I think uh, you should definitely not. You know, we every year we have some alumni days and we ask some alumni to come back and report to us how it's done for them in the job market, maybe a year or two after the master's or even 10 years. And what we see is like many alumni recommend not to limit themselves. Uh, we have people being very high up in higher positions nowadays at Meta, so the parent company of Facebook, Google. Uh, and in the United States. So, and these are people that did not come from the United States originally. Um, we have people moving to sort of uh, kind of uh, kind of more exotic places like uh, the central bank division in Wales, uh, people that did not come that originally came from Italy, for example. But of course, also like a large amount of uh, Swedes, who, especially who stay uh, in the area or go to Stockholm. So I think everything's possible, and uh, but the degrees internationally uh, very well recognized and will open lots of doors for you. All right. Thanks for your input, John. Uh, we have a question here from uh, Professor Hussein. Could you please elaborate on LU Innovation Hub at the university from the perspective of students enrolling at the master's program in finance? Is there some kind of connection that you're aware of between the finance program? No, and unfortunately not. I don't know because, as I said, I'm not responsible of the program and uh, we didn't have that kind of uh, connection with uh, Innovation Hub. But uh, we have a good connection with uh, Link a student organization, which is very helpful regarding the innovation and that because they provide the study trip connection with the industry meetings. Uh, and we have also, yeah, many other kind of activities relation with the industry, not formally, but informally with industry. But I don't know anything uh, regarding the innovation hub. If we have a formal collaboration with them or not, I cannot answer to this. Okay, thank you. 
Let's move on. We have a question for in, uh, European and international trade and tax law. Uh, so Jürgen, uh, does the statement of purpose character limit include the characters in the form I downloaded from the site? Um, maybe a highly specific question um, um, about how to fill out the the template that you have, a statement of purpose. Yeah, and there is another question as, as well. Yeah, I studied <laughs> economic yeah. cybernetics from Ukraine, and I have been working since 2019, federal tax agency, I suppose, in Nigeria. I have recently acquired other tax knowledge from ACCA. With the above information and background, do I qualify uh, for application to apply? It, it, it's kind of sometimes very difficult to answer these questions yeah. suddenly and live. But I can try to give a, a more general answer because I understand this as yeah, when it comes to, I mean, the character, I suppose, is about the, the space for elaborate on, on previous experience, etc. And I think it shouldn't be a problem. I haven't applied myself, so I don't know how it works. But if, if there is any problem with, with space, you, you can upload another document to explain. Because in this case, I think it's important. We, we have what we require for tax law. Uh, that track is uh, 30 credits of, of previous tax law in general. And if you want to switch to have more practical experience instead of that, that should be carefully explained. So please do that in the, I cannot tell you now if you, you are then qualified, but please uh, explain that in your statement of purpose and then we have to uh, look into it. Right. Yeah. I think generally we often get these questions about uh, what what can I do if there I need to write more I want to write you know three or four pages worth of, of but uh, it can be difficult when we evaluate these uh, at some point if there is too much text and too much possibly irrelevant text then that's no good it's better to keep it to the point um, so that our program staff can properly evaluate you as a as an applicant. Okay, uh, Jan Philip is asking, um, I don't know if, is there anyone in the panel who has experience from Germany? Uh, Jan, do you have any experience from Germany? Yeah, Hossein, because there's a question here. In Germany, there is a way to study at university and work for a company at the same time. It's called Dualis Studium. Does that system exist in Sweden? It's pretty good because you gain practical experience and you also earn money. So it's basically combining studies with with uh, some type of relevant, I assume, part time job. Um, is that possible at in Lund? In, no, not uh, in uh, all program because it almost is 100 percent work and then you need to do it in one year or a little bit. Maybe you can extend it until August, for example, for some essays like this. But usually you should be finish everything and this is a very yeah compact program with many courses and case studies and labs and it doesn't give you any time for job beside it right it's very intense basically intense. you have to mm. Jan uh, do you have anything to add here? Yeah, same here I'm I'm aware of that system but it's nothing we do offer here I mean we're like uh, our programs like for meant for full-time study so uh, it's not possible to work on the site Mm. But there is, however, an opportunity. I think Joachim mentioned it. Uh, sometimes it's possible for students when they are doing their uh, graduation or their thesis writing that they can uh, potentially do this in collaboration with a company uh, or organization. Uh, can you expand on that, Joachim? How does that work? How do you find a company with a with a with a suitable kind of offer for you? Um, um some firms they they do announce um thesis projects um on their own or through various channels where where you can where you can uh, the, the um student organizations and so on um we have we have formalized this a little bit so, so we have so we do offer um a number of these cases in house so to speak so so, so the program um itself uh, collects um, cases and 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 pass them on to students uh, and those that are interested can can then contact the the, the companies and and then uh, yeah um, 
if if um, if uh, they like the idea, uh, th then uh, that there is a good match, and that, then uh, this is what what happens. So so uh, yeah, that that is definitely on the table. Mm. Is there any other program here that also has some more kind of collaboration with with the industry or or organizations? so that you can place or offer students in your programs uh, either an internship or a thesis writing project or anything like that i can perhaps just while i'm on um, mm -hmm. as an example so we had last year we had two uh, either one more but two girls um that that uh, wrote their thesis for tetra packs so uh, uh, the cardboard packaging company uh, they do milk cartons and, and what have you um and they have their so, so the headquarters is uh, here in lund and their data analytics department is here in lund and um uh two of the two of the girls uh, they got a the job at tetra pack um, after writing their thesis with them and now for this cohort, the second cohort, they um, actually showed up as as when we had a guest lecture from Tetra Park. Then these two girls were there to 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 talk to the new students. Um, so 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 um, there are a lot of um, these um, interactions, let's say, um, from from firms to to uh, to to, uh, to us and and vice versa. Um, but that is um, all of these um, activities are typically very program specific. Mm. Uh, Hossein, you raised your hand. Uh, yeah, we have guest lectures from uh, industry in all of courses. So, uh, for example, in my course, I have three uh, guest lectures from uh, industry. And uh, in this connection, uh, for example, we can have uh, the topics from suggested from industry for master essay. So several of the students yearly write their essays in some form of collaboration with uh, people in industry. So that's also our way of connection to the industry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Tobias, you also raised your hand. Yeah, um, we, uh, within our program, if you go on to the second year, uh, we offer the students to do uh, an internship uh, course. Um, which basically means that they have to go out and do an internship somewhere and do a collaboration. And that can feed into a thesis or some kind of project like that. But it's not systematic in the sense that we have a number of companies or a number of employers that we are connected to. Uh, but it, all the same, you can say that so from, from this year now, uh, almost a third of the students, so we have about 30 students, almost a third of the students are actually doing this internship course. So they found predominantly in the so-called development track. So they're uh, heading towards uh, then NGOs and, uh, uh, well, bit larger uh, companies or multinationals in the developing world. But, uh, but they're going out themselves to Ghana, to uh, countries in Latin America, etc. Uh, but also within uh, the population program uh, or track and uh, uh, economic growth, it's, uh, we also have students doing this. So we, we offer the opportunity, but you have to stay for the second year because there really is no space in the first year. It's so compact with, with coursework. Right. Yeah. So there's quite a, quite a big difference between the different programs that we have here. And uh, I think the uh, School of Economics and Lund University School of Economics and Management has a very broad portfolio of uh, international master's degree program, which of course we're very proud of. But there are also it's important to note that there are differences uh, in, in between these programs and the way they are structured. I think uh, we're actually reaching the end of this session. I, I have seen that Timothy, my colleague, has been doing his best to answer quite a lot of questions in the in the Q and A that we haven't been able to speak about uh, here. Uh, but I just want to. You know, we have a bit more than or less than one minute to go, um, and I don't want to keep you here more than necessary because I know you're all very busy. Um, but I want to thank all the panelists for joining us here today: Tobias Jan, Joachim, Jürgen, Hossein, and Christina, for sharing some information and and uh, insight into the way that they their programs. 
function here. Um, and I also want to wish all participants the best of luck if they make an application to Lund University School of Economics and Management program. It is competitive, yes, but there is always a chance if you if you have the right profile for a program, uh, you may uh, join the selection. So with that, I would like to thank everyone again. Thank you all and uh, see you <laughs> see you next year maybe uh and until then have a very happy end of the year thank you everyone